The Pentagon says it is likely Russian mercenary boss Yevgeny Prigozhin was indeed killed in that plane crash uh, from earlier this week. But what exactly brought the plane down is still under investigation. The Defense Department denying an Associated Press report that an initial U.S. intelligence analysis found the crash was caused by an explosion. We don't have any information to indicate right now. Um, the press reporting uh, stating that there was some type of surface-to-air missile that took down the plane. That we assess that information to be inaccurate. Meanwhile, Russian President Vladimir Putin broke his silence on the crash, saying Prigozhin was, quote, a man with a complicated fate and that he had made serious mistakes in life. Not quite condolences. Joel Rubin, who served as Deputy Assistant Secretary of State during the Obama administration, with us now. Good morning to you, Joel. Clearly, I mean, this is such a grim headline and kind of a reality check uh, for all of us. The Associated Press says military intelligence has determined there was an explosion causing uh, that plane crash. The Pentagon denying that report. There are rumors that it was shot down by a missile. What likely did cause that plane to crash? And do you think this was at the hands of Putin? Yeah, good morning, Adrian. It's, it's great to be with you. And this is the dark, murky Russia that we all know. And the, what caused it was Vladimir Putin. The specific device, unclear right now. Unclear if there was a bomb on board, unclear if it was shot down. But without a doubt, uh, this was Vladimir Putin's uh, move. It was his decision. Uh, and what he's doing is he's reasserting control, but also demonstrating his deep insecurity as an autocratic leader. Uh, but he did take out this this uh, this uh, terrorist, this criminal, Yevgeny Prigozhin, who uh, challenged his authority, led a, a very short rebellion, and for some reason decided not to go forward with that rebellion, and now has paid the ultimate price. I mean, it it feels uh, surreal when we're talking about it uh, on yeah. the news on, over our coffee, uh, quite casually uh, in some ways. Uh, but when do you think, if ever, we'll know exactly what happened, and does it matter? We might never know. I mean, I, I'm glad you asked that question. There there have been political assassinations that uh, Vladimir Putin has ordered going back two decades that can never be directly traced to him, but uh, the, clearly he is uh, the one benefiting from them as the people who speak out against him, as the people who, in the case of Prigozhin, uh, take up arms against him, uh, are off, are, are disappeared, are, are essentially no longer with us. And you're right, it is dark. Uh, but this is Vladimir Putin, and this is what he does. And, and look, he invaded a country in Ukraine that did not attack him, and nearly half a million people are now dead less than two years later, uh, both Russians and, and Ukrainians. So uh, Vladimir Putin, this is how he's maintained his power. And uh, clearly, there was a bit of a surprise, actually, after the Prigozhin Rebellion that he cut a deal. But clearly, Vladimir Putin had other things in mind, and we just saw the result. Ukraine's president telling reporters they had nothing to do with it. I, I don't think that he needed to say that, but uh, he said out loud, everyone understands who is involved. Speaking of Putin, uh, this death is in one sense just a small facet. Uh, you mentioned the, the deaths. Uh, thousands have now been killed in this war on both the Ukrainian, mostly the Russian side. Uh, sad for all those people in, in uh, Russia who are mourning the loss of their children and grandchildren. But when you think about Putin's heartlessness, if indeed he is the one pulling the trigger uh, again, uh, as has been par for the course, we've heard that time and time again from U.S. officials, what makes the administration think that he will ever stand down in this war against Ukraine? That is the biggest concern, is that Vladimir Putin is uh, leading a, a, a disastrous war for his country. Uh, a war that's isolated Russia, damaged its economy, cost hundreds of thousands of lives, uh, really not achieved its military objectives. And yet there he goes, and there he continues. And so uh, that's why we see the continued support for Ukraine. That's why we see the bipartisan support on Capitol Hill, President Biden uh, so actively pushing for more aid to Ukraine, our European allies as well, because there's recognition that Vladimir Putin isn't just going to unilaterally stop, that he's going to have to be forced to at some point recognize that he li literally cannot continue. Uh, but we don't know when that's going to happen. So for now, uh, that is the man that we're dealing with. Uh, that is the man who uh, takes his enemies out, his adversaries out in dark, uh, dark uh, cloak and dagger maneuvers, as we just saw. And it's likely that he is not going to stand down until he is forced to stand down. And that's why the support for Ukraine right now and going forward still is so necessary.
Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.